You know, one of the more interesting pieces of feedback I get as a movie critic is I know where you drink, you dick, so you'd better watch your back because if I run into you, you're a dead man. <laughs> Drinker, you conscientious connoisseur of cinematic calamities, why do you feel the need to be so critical of everything? Why can't you stop asking questions and just enjoy a film for what it is? Why can't you validate my opinions and stop making me question whether I'm a complete idiot for pretending to enjoy the sludge being sharted out by faceless monolithic corporations that would just as soon grind my body into the dirt the moment I stop being a valid revenue stream for them? What a idiot! Oh, what a loser! Now, to be fair, most of these criticisms tend to come from mindless, pointless, toxically positive consumers that have become so used to eating shit that they've somehow convinced themselves they like the taste. But it did get me to thinking, what exactly is the correct way to experience a piece of art? Is it possible to break it down too much, be too critical, analyse it to the point where you've robbed it of its magic and meaning? Well, this is the question at the core of The Menu, a kind of satirical horror movie set in an exclusive restaurant run by a homicidal chef determined to take revenge against the people who destroyed his love of cooking. I know it sounds kind of weird, and well, it is, but it's also a brilliantly tense and insightful look at entitlement and ego, the dangers of elevating a profession to the point of absurdity, and how we can and should experience artistic endeavours. Now, this meal that I'm going to present to you is rich and complex, and and it's going to take a bit of explanation, so button up your chef whites and let's begin service. The movie is seen mostly through the eyes of Margot, played by Anya Taylor-Joy, who's on a date with food-obsessed Tyler to one of the world's most exclusive restaurants, set on a private island and run by legendary head chef Julian Slowick. Their fellow diners are the kind of eclectic mix of weirdos and rich pretentious arseholes you'd expect at a place like this. The picky and self-important food critic, the washed up movie star and his long-suffering assistant, the overbearing dude bros trying to throw their weight around, and the rich but unhappy old couple with money to burn and nothing better to do. A brief tour of the island gives some insight into how disciplined and regimented life is for the staff here, their every waking moment dedicated to the pursuit of culinary perfection. It's exactly the kind of over-the-top, self-serious nonsense that's become the norm for ultra-high-end restaurants, and it's reflected in the food that's served up to them, each fussy and pretentious dish accompanied by a lengthy introduction by Slowick. But as the evening progresses, things take a sinister turn when one of the kitchen staff ends his own life in front of the entire audience, and Slowick calmly informs them that he intends to kill all of the guests and himself by the end of the night. See, it turns out that the guest list for the evening was carefully chosen by Slowick himself, each table representing an aspect of modern food culture that he personally despises because they've slowly destroyed his love and passion for cooking. The pretentious and hypercritical food writer who finds fault in even the most exquisite and painstakingly prepared meals with the power to destroy lives and careers with absolutely no repercussions. The rich and entitled couple who dine in high-end restaurants so often that they can't even remember the food they eat. The jaded and washed up actor who stars in shitty movies for a quick paycheck and only eats here just to boost his public image. The obnoxious money men with a financial stake in the restaurant who try to leverage their authority to get things done their way. And of course, the wannabe food expert who's learned and memorised every aspect of Slowick's work, robbing it of its mystery and magic, but lacks any deeper understanding of the care and artistry that goes into it. Each of these people represent different perspectives on how art, or in this case, food can be experienced, but the thing they all have in common is that none of them are really capable of appreciating the meals that have been prepared for them, either through apathy and entitlement, a negative mindset, over intellectualization or a desire to change it to better suit themselves. The result being that food, once a passion for Slowick, has slowly been turned into an all-consuming obsession, a constant drive to cater to the ever wilder and more ridiculous expectations of people who absolutely don't deserve it. It's kind of an interesting paradox when you think about it. His own success has elevated him to the point where the only people rich and powerful enough to afford his food either can't or won't appreciate it. No wonder the guy fucking despises them. But the the odd man out in all of this is Margot, a last minute substitution after Tyler's original date stood him up, the kind of girl who charges by the hour if you catch my drift. 
Tyler was so desperate to be here that he literally hired an escort girl to go with him rather than give up his seat. Anyway, the point is that in amongst all these critics and influencers and sycophants, Margot's the only person here who's actually real. The only one who's not daunted by Slowick's reputation and refuses to take part in his game. And maybe the only person in the whole movie who understands what the man really wants. The Menu is the kind of movie that will have you thinking about it a long time after it's over, partly because it makes a pretty compelling commentary on modern culture, and partly because it's a really fucking well-constructed film in the first place. Every aspect from the directing to the set design to the writing and characterization and the performances are all top notch. Every table is given just enough screen time to flesh out the various characters, who they appear to be at first and who they're eventually revealed to be, and it's interesting to watch their reactions as they're confronted with the mystique and shortcomings that brought them here. The dude bros with all their fake camaraderie who bail on each other at the first opportunity. The movie star and his assistant each working to exploit and undermine the other. The fanboy willing to sacrifice an innocent woman's life just to fulfil his obsession. They're all shitty people in their own ways and it's funny that when the truth gets presented to them, they don't even really fight back. It's like they've kind of accepted their own fate. Performances are flawless throughout. Rafe Fiennes might as well have been tailor-made for the role here. He's sinister and menacing as the tyrannical head chef, but there's a core of pain and anger and humanity that he's able to bring through at just the right moment. I mean, I never imagined that watching a man preparing a cheeseburger would feel so impactful, but it absolutely works here because you can clearly see what it means to him to finally prepare an honest meal for someone who'll appreciate it. Anya Taylor-Joy is one of those actresses that I find myself liking and respecting more with every performance she gives. She's clearly willing to take risks and do more challenging and difficult projects rather than homing in on those safe, high-profile A-list movies, and that's absolutely to her credit. There's not many young actresses that could hold their own against someone like Fines, but she's more than up to the task, and by the end, I was absolutely rooting for her character. Obviously, the menu storyline is centred around food, but I think most people would recognise that it's trying to address far bigger issues than just that. It's a commentary on how we experience art, our endless demands for bigger and better, our desire to deconstruct and dismantle, to strip away the magic and mystery by exposing every trick and technique, to obsess over its flaws and ignore its triumphs, and ultimately to kill the passion of the people creating it. And what's left is a sterile, passionless facsimile of what once was, lacking the heart and joy that made it so special in the first place. And yeah, I'm aware of the irony of a movie critic praising a movie that's specifically pushing back against the very stuff he does for a living, but what the fuck? Sometimes in life, it really is okay to just stop worrying and enjoy a good cheeseburger. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.